jibba jab. Bamboozle new canoes all pippity pop she called. You jibba jab. Bamboozle new canoes all pippity pop she called. I mean, you keep on talking, but you don't know where to turn it off. Welcome to the weekend. I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute. You're watching Independent Thinking. Well, Obamacare is coming. Aren't we all thrilled? <laughs> to talk about it, two hotties from the Independence Institute, Linda Gorman, who runs our Health Care Policy Center, and Amy Oliver Cook, who runs our Transparency Project. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. All right, let's, let's get into this. I want to talk about how Obamacare, as passed, is going to affect Colorado specifically. Uh, first of all, I didn't think this thing was going to go through. I mean, if you ask me, um, the day after Scott Brown was elected, we all seem to say, this thing's dead. America doesn't want it. Sixty-some percent of Americans don't want it. The Senate now will not be able to compromise on anything. It's over and dead and done with. Never underestimate the left. Right. Bribes work wonders. Um, but here we are, and it's going to do some bad things to Colorado. Health care costs for everybody are going to go up. Um, it starts immediately, um, in part because one of the things that has to happen is that insurers have to cover this massive list of preventive care. And you don't pay for, you know, insurers don't pay for your health care. You pay for your health care via these insurance mechanisms. So all of a sudden, premiums are going to start rising. Um, the bill is mostly a tax bill, so the tax hits start coming in 2012. Why do you say it's a tax bill? Now, this, this is a mandate. It says that if you breathe oxygen in the United States, you have, you to, have to buy, you have to go to a, a big corporation and buy one of their private products. I've never heard of this, and uh, I, I thought in America we weren't forced to, to buy things from private companies, but it's not a tax. I don't see a tax. I don't make $200,000 a year. I'm okay. Well, if you don't pay that little whatever it is, amount that you have to have to buy a product that government says you have to buy, then the IRS comes after you. In theory, of course, we're not sure they actually put that in the bill. There's some debate about that, whether the IRS can enforce it. But, you know, we'll let one of our viewers be the test case, and we, we, will, <laughs> we will pay our taxes. Um, so you have to pay for this, and so it's a tax. Um, that's one of the um, constitutional issues that the states are using to challenge this bill, um, that it's imposing an illegal tax because under as the Constitution was amended you can impose income taxes that's illegal but this isn't an income tax and you can impose taxes that are directly proportional to the population of the state but this isn't that either so what is it and where does the federal government get the authority to impose this tax? There's kind of an odd coalition coming here I know some hardcore civil libertarians uh, who are way left to center they're socialists and they hate this bill. And what amazes me is that we join with them probably for the same reason that uh, we're being mandated to buy something. I, I haven't heard this before. Well, I, absolutely. We're being, we are being mandated to participate in a market that otherwise we may have chosen to not participate in a minute. It's astounding to me. And I got to say one thing about your prediction. I made the exact same prediction and I'm so bad that my own representative who I predicted would vote against it ended up voting for it. So <laughs> that's, that's Betsy Markey. You yeah. live in the fourth congressional district. Right. And let me make it very clear. We'll write this one down. I'll put 20 bucks on it. You, you remember in Star Trek when Kirk and Spock and Bones and some guy in a red shirt would beam down to the planet? <laughs> yeah. um, Betsy Markey is the guy in the red shirt. She is toast. She will not be reelected because of this. I, Am I, this is your area of town. You tell me. Uh, that would be my guess. That would be my guess. I was surprised when I heard that she would probably vote for it. Um, she ended up ultimately voting for it. And in our district, it is overwhelmingly unpopular. I think it was the Chamber of Commerce that pulled the fourth congressional district, and it showed that it was um, it, it does not enjoy support within the fourth congressional district. Very, so yeah, very I polite mean, way of putting that. Well, I like that. <laughs> um, while it might be courageous to have voted with Nancy Pelosi and Barack Obama, I don't think the people of the fourth congressional district feel that way. I can't speak for all of them, but certainly the polls have indicated that this is not a popular bill in the fourth well, congressional. Well, Tom, let's see, I, and I know politics is not necessary policy, but you know. Isn't it odd that here in Colorado, where I believe, according to an article in the Politico, we're one of the top three states that hates Obamacare, and yet only two out of our nine delegates to D.C. voted against this. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering what the blowback's going to be in, in November. 
I don't know, should be fun to watch. Meanwhile, I'm just going to try to pay my taxes that this bill is going to put on me. Um, they're going to tax medical devices. Tanning is going to be taxed. That's already starting with tax. Yes. Tanning. Now, who? I, I love when, when Obama said, you know, if you don't make more than $200,000 a year, you're not going to pay more in taxes. Uh, uh, and then when he got in there, he, of course, raised tobacco taxes. So if we enjoy a cigar, that's it. But now, small mom and pop tanning salons are going to have to pay 10% more for, yes. for taxes, starting now. Yes, if you own certain kinds of equities in ATT or Verizon or Deer or Caterpillar, you already took a big hit on the value of your stock. How so? I don't understand that. Because those companies had to take large write downs in the last few days because what has happened is the government, when, when they passed Medicare, Medicare Part D, the drug bill, the companies all went, cool, we'll put our retirees on this plan. The federal government said, don't do that, you know, too expensive, we can't handle it, we'll give you a tax-free subsidy if you'll keep these retirees on your plan. Well, now the Obama administration, government giveth, government taketh away. Now they've taken away that subsidy. And this is why Caterpillar said that if this thing passed, which it did, it would cost them $100 million Correct. the first year. The first year, they, because this they year. have to take by law again, and Henry Waxman can haul all these poor CEOs up and beat them up all he wants, but securities law says they have to restate their earnings immediately. So that affects the value of your stock immediately. Um, and if, you're, if your compensation, as it is in some of these companies, depends on the value of the stock, then you've been nailed immediately. So that's an example of a tax. They're going to tax medical devices. The tampon tax hits in 2013. Excuse me? The tampon tax. <laughs> Finally, it's a tax a <laughs> I don't care about. This is the first time for me. I have no interest in this tax at all. How about the epidural all. tax? Are you interested in that? Um, I've, I've Having seen a baby has just gotten way more expensive. Right, well, get back to the yeah. tampon tax. I didn't know this one. Help me out. What is the tampon tax? Certain types of medical devices are going to be taxed. The tampon, since it's in your body, is a medical device. Your eyeglasses are going to be taxed. Your, your contacts are going to be taxed. Um, pacemakers are going to be taxed. Um, there's differential taxes on drugs. This is nice for the government because it can say, oh, you know, nobody sees these taxes. It's just that you see health care prices going up and you want to have something stop it. And so this just gives the government more ammunition to come back with the next stage of the legislation is we're going to control prices or whatever, you know, gets cooked up in secret liberal labs to, to you know, make us all worse off. Doesn't the tanning tax seem somewhat discriminatory, though? I mean, just because I am fair-skinned or somebody is fair-skinned or a young gal who is going to, wants to go to prom and have a little bit of a tan, it seems like we're picking on her. Hey, listen, but, just because you're not a swarthy guy like me, that's not my fault. But Linda Don't cry racism now just because you're too Caucasian. <laughs> but Linda brings up a good point about uh, all of these this taxation, and there is a, a bill moving through the state legislature that I find to be incredibly frightening from a transparency perspective, and it is the all-payer database. And, and Colorado is really already headed in this direction. We have uh, some legislators down at the state capitol who ha have wanted to lay the groundwork to introduce by 2011, essentially, a single-payer system here in Colorado. They Last year, a bill was defeated that would have funded a private commission to study the single payer system so they came back this year with this all payer health care database which essentially says every single transaction that is health care related within the state of Colorado whether it is public or private doesn't matter if it's Medicare or Medicaid doesn't matter if you actually want to go pay cash for your transaction it has to be reported into this massive database.